guys, my name is Ben from Doom Duck Media, and today we're going to be showing you the first episode of a progressive trick tip series by Riptide Sports, where today we are going to be learning the Coleman. Alright guys, so first before any questions arise, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my setup that I'm demoing the Coleman slides with today. I have a 2009 Reign Avenger, and for the trucks I'm using, I have 44 caliber trucks and 1 8 soft risers, 1 8 inch soft risers. And for my bushings, I'm riding all Riptide Sports bushings. I am using 90A barrels as my roadside bushing and 95A chubby bushings board side and for my wheels I have 72 millimeter ADA Venom Cannibals this is a great setup for downhill and speedy free ride which is nice for practicing and executing these types of slides with that being said we're gonna go ahead and start talking about the Coleman slide and the three things that you should think about when you're executing them that those three things would be your shoulders and how you're rotating them as well as your foot placement on the board and your weight distribution with both of your feet on the board. So let's go ahead and talk about how you use your shoulders when executing a Coleman slide. Alright guys, first thing to note is that a Coleman slide is defined on defined by how you place your feet on the board, which we're going to talk about in a second. But first I want to talk to you about shoulders because I think that's one of the most important parts of executing a Coleman slide. Now, when you're executing a Coleman slide, you can either rotate the board 180 degrees or do what some people call a pendulum, in which you throw out the board to be perpendicular to the direction that you're traveling or a little bit farther than perpendicular and to bring it back into your original stance. Some people call that a pendy, you can call it whatever you like, but shoulders, your shoulder movement is what determines whether or not you do a 180 or you bring the board back. And that's for one simple reason. I'm just going to put the board back. When you move your shoulders, your lower body follows your shoulders. So if you're thinking about doing a 180, you want to throw your shoulders all the way across. What that'll do is force your hips and then your feet to follow. And by opening your shoulders all the way up, your hips will follow and your legs will follow and you will be 180 degrees from the stance in which you started. Now, if you just want to do a pendulum, or if you just want to throw the board out and retain your original stance, you want to open your shoulders enough to get the board perpendicular to your direction of travel, and then you want to close your shoulders back so that your back foot comes back into place, your hip comes back into place, and you're back in your original stance. Now, I should note very quickly that you don't want to be exactly perpendicular to your direction of travel at any time while you're sliding, because that will flat spot your wheels. You want to be very close, if not almost 90 degrees from your original starting position or a little bit over 90 degrees. You don't want to be totally perpendicular because your wheels will stop rotating and they will flat spot. So now that we have kind of a basic idea of how your shoulders act in a Coleman slide, we're going to talk about your foot placement. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about foot placement. Foot placement is also very important, possibly equally important, to your shoulder movement when you're executing this slide. Your front foot is going to stay relatively uh, still throughout this whole process. You're not going to be shifting it around a lot because ideally you are going to want to be able to come out of a tuck very quickly into your Coleman position to be able to execute the slide stand back up and resume your tuck in a situation where you're trying to maintain speed and get the most speed out of a corner. So with that being said, your front foot is going to be wherever you feel comfortable tucking. For me, that's about right there. It's a little bit farther forward than a 45 degree angle, but it feels nice just to be able to get my foot down, but here in the back I don't have to change this foot at all to be able to do a Coleman. Now the back foot here is what's really going to be important. 
you need to be able to transition this quickly into a Coleman position or if you need to into a toe side position so your back foot placements really going to be key here while you're performing the slide I like to have the meaty part of my shoe right here near the arch of my foot resting on the rail what that allows me to do is keep weight over top of the board with this portion of my foot and push laterally against the rail with this part of my foot and allows me to maintain the perfect ratio of weight over the board and to the side of the board. Now weight distribution we're going to talk about in a minute but foot placement also helps you do that. So ideally in a Coleman slide you're going to want to have your front foot pretty close to your tuck position and your back foot as I just explained with your heel or a little bit more than your heel hanging over the back rail. Now this is kind of the hard part for some people. This will really help you if you practice it like this and nail it. You don't want to do a Coleman slide like this. My body is not over the board right now and I really don't have hardly any weight over the board. Yes, I'm fairly close to the board. I'm not all the way back here, but I'm still off my board and I don't have control right now because my shoulders can go any which way at this point and I'm just sliding forward. What you want to do is drop your back knee down and also drop this foot on its side. So now what you've got here is my body directly over the board, most of my weight on my front foot which is going to prevent me from getting wobbles because you want to steer from the front and it's going to allow me if I need to to moderate the amount of weight that I have back here and move my foot in or out to throw whether it be you know, I want to open my shoulders and do a full 180, or if I just want to kick things out for a pre-drift. This setup allows me to do both of those things. And then once I execute it, I can pop right back up into my tuck stance, which is going to be really beneficial to you if you are thinking about racing or just you find yourself in any situation where you want to maintain speed. So with that, those two things being covered, we're finally going to talk about weight distribution. guys weight distribution is going to be the final thing you're going to add into this formula for executing a Coleman slide so what you're going to want to think about here is what kind of Coleman slide you want to execute if you want to execute a 180 or a shutdown slide you're going to want to have an equal amount of weight over both your feet which translates to an equal amount of weight over your wheels which translates to you coming to a stop as quickly as possible now this isn't going to be the type of weight distribution you want if you want to kick out the back and bring it back in for anything like a pre-drift. If you want to do a pre-drift, you have to keep in mind that with your back foot, you need to be able to kick out the back of the board and suck it back in with that back foot pretty much by yourself because your shoulders aren't going to be involved with that because you don't want your lower body to rotate. You just want to kick out your back foot and bring it in to lose a little bit of speed for the corner. So in that case, you want to load up your front foot just a little bit more, not entirely, but a little bit more. Put your hand down, keep your body over the board. You don't want to be back here. You don't want to be like this. You want to maintain your position here. Get your weight on this foot, which will allow you, when you're moving, to kick out this, however much you want to kick it out and for how long as you want to kick it out. It doesn't have to be a huge pre-drift, it can just be a little one you can bring it back in as long as you don't have too much weight on the back wheels to prevent that to prevent them from easily moving in and out so that's pretty basic right there and I'll go ahead and try to wrap up how to combine all these things and put them together into the perfect coma slide So now we're going to put all three steps together and I'm going to walk you through a static Coleman. So you're going downhill, which for me in this example is this way. 
and you're in your tuck stance. Let's assume that for your first slide, you're going to want to do a pre-drift. In this case, the first thing you want to do is get low. You don't want to try and throw back your hand and then get low, because you're just going to splat right on the ground, which is no fun. You want to get low first, assume your stance. You see my knee's already dropped, my foot's already peeling up a little bit and getting into the stance. Then I simply set my hand down, and you can see how I've got the front foot loaded here. There's not much back here. At this point, I can either kick my shoulders a little bit out if I want to initiate the slide and get some help initiating the slide. I will want to open up my shoulders a little bit to give my legs a little momentum to throw out the board. In which case, I will now be in this position, drifting in this direction, not totally perpendicular to my direction of travel, just how I want it. And then when I'm done, I can close my shoulders back and my back foot will bring the tail of the board back around where I then lift my hand up and stand back up into my tuck position. And that's a pre-drift. Now for a 180 or a shutdown slide, it's going to be very similar. You're still going to want to go down and assume, assume the position first. Put your hand back and then open your shoulders all the way. So what that's going to do is rotate your hips and start to move your feet. And if you need to, if you've got really grippy wheels, you can still use your back foot to help kick it out because your shoulders aren't going to do everything in most cases. You're still going to want to use your feet, use your shoulders, and the board, as long as you open your shoulders and continually open your shoulders, the board is going to come all the way around. You're still going to be in your Coleman position. It's still going to feel weird because now you're going switch, but then you can stand up and right away switch. Really, what differentiates a pendulum slide from a 180 is going to be your shoulders. Foot placement and weight distribution are still important, but you really need to focus on your shoulders and using them in the proper way. I hope this has helped you guys learn how to do a Coleman. If you have any questions, PM me, leave a comment, anything. We will help you out as much as we can. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs>